Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of I Read Somewhere That. And I'm going to start off with a great post by Kate McKean on her newsletter, Agents and Books. And she asks this, why do you buy books? And then subtitle, flip it around to figure out how to sell yours. This is what she says. Why do you buy books? I mean, if you're reading this, I'm sure you love books in some capacity because you love to read them or write them or both or collect them without reading them, even though you intend to read them. No judgment. To answer this question, you might say you love literature or words. You want or need to be transported to other worlds worlds because you want to learn new things. You might love books because they help you discover things about yourself or because they make you feel, or because they make you smarter, or look smarter, and again, no judgment. And these are all fantastic reasons, and they're true. But that's not why I'm asking you why you buy books. And she says, when I say buy, I also mean check out from the library, because libraries buy books for you. They all count, and I agree about that on a personal note. I'm always really grateful to people who take my books out at the library. So she continues on to say, I could more accurately say, why did you buy the last book you bought, the last specific book? My guess is you didn't only buy it because of one of the abstractions above, like like, love or learn or escape. You probably bought it for a real identifiable reason. And here is my unofficial, not exhausted list of reasons to buy books. Someone famous told you to. Next one, someone you know told you to. Next one, you need to know a thing. Next one, you want to look cool. Or, you aspire to be or do the thing in the book. Next one, merch. And she says, sometimes a book is akin to the band t-shirt at a concert. Great, buy the shirt, buy the book. (laughs) Then the last one on the list is, It does the things you want to do. And to each of these um, categories, she has written a little subtext. So you can look her up and see what else she said there. Um, But I thought that was really a great point. Why why did you buy the last book that you did? Um, I'm going to have to think about that one, actually. The last book I purchased was Honorarium by Nathaniel Moore. And I purchased it because I am interested in his insights into the book publishing industry. So that was the last one that I bought. Um, Moving on, I read somewhere that the writing community is everything. I kind of came to this conclusion myself by seeing hashtag writer community. Now, I belong to a great collector, the Madames of Mayhem. And I just want to mention that our most recent newsletter is out. We do one monthly. And I hope you'll check it out because there's a lot of fab stuff to read there. And that website is themadamsofmayhem.com. Actually, there's no the. Madamesofmayhem.com. And that links to what I read on Twitter, which was that the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival has nominated the Madams of Mayhem our director, Kat Mills, for the best international director. So huge congrats to Kat Mills. We had so much fun doing that documentary. And you can check out the documentary on um, on YouTube as well. So congrats to Kat. That was a really fun time. And thank heavens we did it all before COVID because we could do it all together. Then I read something on Facebook and um, it's posted by Sandra Newman uh, at at S-A-N-N-E-W-N-M-A-N, is Sandra Newman, obviously. I'm sorry, I'm getting so tangled. And the seven secrets of highly successful people. This is interesting. One, private school, legacy Ivy admission, nepotism hire, seed capital from family, club memberships, personal assistant, comma, nanny, comma, ghostwriter. The last one is journalists who ask, what's your secret? And uncritically publish the answer. 
So that was interesting and kind of depressing because it's like, well, <laughs> what chance does any of us have really? And that led me to the next thing that I read on Instagram. And uh, this was the five rules of book reviewing. And it was by posted by a friend of mine. And the site was www. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I'm just going to spell it. A-L-E-T-H-E-A-K-O-N-T-I-S dot com. And that person said this. You do not have to have purchased a book on Amazon to leave a review there. Mm, not sure about that. Second one. You do not have to read the whole book to leave a review. Mm, I personally definitely disagree with that one because you can't judge a book by, you know, reading a piece of it. Um, I personally get quite upset when, you know, people write generally negative reviews on Goodreads about one of my books and DNF, you know, did not finish. And I'm like, well, if you didn't finish it, like... I don't know if you really should have left a review. Anyway, just putting that out there. Guys, what do you think? All right, third point. Reviews can be as simple as, love this one so much, can't wait for the next one. And then, this is added in caps, they don't even have to be spelled correctly. No, 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 no. Here is me jumping up and down, okay? <laughs> they definitely have to be spelled correctly please it just shows total lack of interest and you know it's really easy to get a spell check done I mean I know it's easy for errors to creep in it happens all the times but you know just rather don't do that and then it says authors need reviews on Amazon to get better placement in the algorithms and other crazy things which you wouldn't believe and that's true there are algorithms out there which we cannot control but I really don't think that you know Fake reviews, half reviews, badly spelled reviews are our friend, right? And then she ends by saying, Algorithm, algorithms are not reading and grading your reviews. They just look at numbers. So it's a bot game, right? So frankly, I do not want bots giving me a thumbs up. I'd rather a real life person took the time to A, read my book, B, write a review, and C, check the spelling. And I promise to do the same in return for the books that I read. Um, I wanted to finish off with a note from um, Kenneth White, publisher of Sutherland Press, and he noted, we wrote last week about how the publishing supply chain has been blown up. More evidence this week. Marquis, one of Canada's two largest book printers, sent a memo to its customers advising them of price increase from two paper suppliers. The first, Domtar, Dom, Domta, has increased prices by 6 to 9% across the board. The second, Roland, is up by 6 to 8%, and both are citing paper shortages as the reasons for the increases. Printers will pass up these increases along to publishers for whom printing is a big expense. He says it's the biggest single line item at Sutherland House. And publishers will probably pass along the increase to consumers. So it's a bit of a sobering note to end with. I usually try and end with something that is more upbeat and positive than that. But we will forge on and um, hopefully next week I will have a lot better news to bring you. Still, I feel like there was some really good stuff there. So I'm going to be more cognizant of why I bought the last book that I, I bought. Just, you know, not just with regard to Nathaniel's book, but with other books and I hope you will too and uh, yeah let's review each other's book but let's do it in a cognizant and um, intelligent fashion so that's all from me this week have a great one thank you bye